prosecutor. You see him on MSNBC all the time. He has his own YouTube channel, Justice Matters with Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, does justice matter anymore? Not to the Supreme Court. Let's face it, Dean. I am one pissed off former prosecutor right now because the Supreme Court just sold American democracy down the flipping river. Plain and simple. They didn't have to do it. There was no need for it. You know, how quickly did the Supreme Court throw the election to Bush in 2000? They didn't. I mean, they didn't even read the briefs. They're just like, just throw him the election. Mm -hmm. Here we are. We've waited months and months. And at a leisurely pace, the Supreme Court has decided we're going to wait so long that we're not going to give the American people the opportunity to have this flippin' mope run through the federal criminal justice system, held accountable for his crimes against the American people, so the American voters will have a full appreciation of who this man is when they go to the polls in November. This is despicable. It's disgusting. And I'll tell you, it is disqualifying of this Supreme Court as a legitimate institution of government Period. Glenn Kirshner. Absolutely right. Bush v. Gore, December 8, 2024, three decisions. Supreme Court of Florida decides their thing. Bush campaign appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court. December 9th, there's a stay granted, oral argument, December 11th, and then a day later they have a decision. So, and even the 14th Amendment case, they, on January 5th, they said they're taking the appeal. On February 8th, they heard it. This is far more important than the 14th Amendment case. But now we are two months. What, is there any defense of waiting two months and calling it expedited? It's almost ironic that they're calling it expedited. No, the only defense is that they were trying to do a favor, though, for Donald Trump. This thing has been briefed up, argued and resolved several times over. First of all, there is no legal basis for them to accept review. There's no law that provides a president has absolute immunity against being prosecuted for the crimes he commits in violation of our federal laws against the United States, against the American people while he is in office. Indeed, there's contrary authority because the, the impeachment uh, judgment clause of the Constitution says a president can be impeached and he can still be prosecuted. How do you contort that into a president can never be prosecuted? You know, I, I can't, I always look for the silver lining behind the big dark orange cloud. I, I can't find one on this topic, Dean. I can't find one. I share your frustration. And as I've said earlier in the show, I've said numerous times in the past when we talked about the legal case of Donald Trump, it was not that we wanted the court or Jack Smith to save us from Trump. We were going to have to do it. My anger and frustration is the injustice of this, that the the two, three-tiered system, whatever, were at the top of that pyramid of justice. The wealthy and conservative Republicans live a different life than the average American and people of color a whole different life than that. That's what upsets me, that it is the rank injustice of it where it's so in our face. It's so in our face. And here we are. Yeah. And, you know, the Wisconsin, uh, not Wisconsin, excuse me, the Colorado courts held a trial on the merits with witnesses, fact witnesses, expert witnesses, and a judge ruled Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. The Supreme Court of Colorado affirmed that and said, therefore, the Constitution disqualifies him. Anybody who can read English understands that. And what does the Supreme Court do? They swoop in and put a stop to it, right? And now, yes, they haven't issued their opinion yet, but we, we already know, know what yeah. they're going to do. We heard the argument with our own ears. They put they put details over democracy in that Supreme Court argument, right? So you can reach no conclusion but that a certain block of the Supreme Court you know, is determined to do everything they can, not just for a Republican candidate for president, but for a criminal Republican candidate for president. But you know what, Dean? Here we go again. It's up to us. It's up to we, the people, to get to the polls in numbers too big to rig and too real to steal. It's on our shoulders again because our gosh dang institutions of government will not do the hard work of democracy. And this is insanity for somebody who is inside government for 30 years. I saw good people, good people working honorably and ethically and honestly to to really do the legal work of the American people. And for whatever reason, we have just decided that's no longer 
the priority of the institutions of government. And it is it's sickening. It's sickening. I'm I'm with you. I'm chatting with Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, is there a chance they're taking this case because the conservatives want to modify or even reverse some of the decision of the U.S. Court of Appeals and grant some level of immunity to Donald Trump? No, because they wouldn't they wouldn't overturn settled precedent. They wouldn't go <laughs> against starry decisis. They wouldn't they wouldn't depart from legal rulings of the Supreme Court that have stood the test of time for 50 years. They wouldn't dream of doing that. Wait, wait, wait. They did that when they revoked women's constitutional privacy rights, didn't they? So do you think there is because we were entertaining that thought that it's not just a delay that they because that U.S. Court of Appeals decision, I think we even discussed it was so well written, well reasoned. They did a phenomenal job. There was a Republican judge of the three panel and two Democrats. They could have easily said, we're not taking this case and affirmed it. And so they're taking it. And I wonder if they're going to modify it to give Trump immunity for this, but rein in the idea that you can have SEAL Team 6 kill them, the justices, because that's what they don't want, that part. I don't, you know, I had some suspicion, Dean, that because they want to be the big dogs on the block all the time, they didn't want the historic legal precedent to be in the books based on what three federal appellate court judges said. They wanted to take it and they wanted to put their own spin on it. But if they wanted to do that, they could have lifted the stay and also let the, the case get back on the trial mm -hmm. track so the American people have some hope of casting an informed vote in November. Are you voting for a convicted felon or a federal felon? Or are you voting for somebody who's gone through trial and a jury of his peers have found him not guilty on all charges, fully cleared him, exonerated him? He's an innocent man. I think the American people have a damn right to know who they're voting for. And the Supreme Court just decided to put a stop to it. Um, I, I don't know what they're going to do. But what I do know is that because Judge Chutkin said, look, I'm going to give you the three months from the time the case was paused until the time the March trial date would have mm -hmm. been held. I'll give you that three months. So, Dean, they didn't even set it for argument next week, which they could I have. Know. They right. set it two months down the road for the week of we'll get around to it. Oh, let's say the week of April 22nd. Then we'll decide it in a month or two. And then you know what? Oh. Judge Chutkin's not going to get it back in time to give them the three month run up before the elections. We're so sorry, American people. We're so sorry. Glenn, let me ask you, as someone who was a former federal prosecutor, what is your sense of, say, the Supreme Court holds it, they give us a decision late May? And it's similar to the U.S. Court of Appeals. Trump doesn't have immunity, has to get tried. It goes back to Chut Chutkin. And I reminded people before you came on, December 13th, she put a stay on her case. And March 4th is a trial date, so you have to do three months. So you play that out, and it becomes September. Will this DOJ and Mayor Garland uh, be okay with a trial of the Republican nominee for president two months before Election Day? Dean, I think I ought to get out of the prediction game <laughs> because, uh, I, you know, things used to work in a, a somewhat understandable fashion, and they don't anymore. They just don't. Um, I don't think because, you know, I am a, a fact based and reality based person. I don't think the Department of Justice will step in and say, oh, well, now we're within 60 days of an election. I, I, I you know, at least Merrick Garland said, um, no, once the court has the case, it's a whole different calculation. Okay. It's not our mm -hmm. it's no longer our 60 day policy, which is. Right. BS, in my opinion, that controls. It's the court that controls. And he's right about that. So, no, I still think there's an outside chance that if if the Supreme Court resolves it quickly, if they rule that a president can't kill his political rivals with impunity, um, then I do think Judge Chutkin can get it back on the calendar and get it tried. Listen, there's a little bit of silver lining, and that is we've got a New York trial coming up. So March 25th. That trial date kicks off. Donald Trump will be a convicted felon, albeit in state court in New York. And I, I hesitate to even say it. We still have a May 20th trial date on the books in Florida, as you, you, you can scoff at me and I deserve it, because this Friday we'll be up in court down in Florida and Judge 
uh, Cannon will, t- 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 Donald Trump's favorite judge will decide whether she's going to keep that May 20 trial date on the books or not. I was betting all along that, you know, she, if she kicked it, it would have been a perfect opportunity for Judge Chutkin to drop her trial right there on the calendar on Mm -hmm. May 20th if the Supreme Court gave it back to her. That's not going to happen now. Um, But, you know, she has made a decent ruling recently. Maybe she will say, listen, we're still on the calendar for May 20. Here's the here is the the curveball that gets thrown into that. Donald Trump is also claiming he has presidential immunity for crimes he committed after he left the presidency, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, knowing, right. you know, knowing words and what they mean. <laughs> but, um, you know, so so who the hell knows? Up Are you in down, Florida? Huh? Are you in Florida? No, I'm in D- oh. I'm outside of D.C., though, you know, I may be oh, no, I th- you said Florida. Citizenship somewhere else soon. Right, down, right. I thought yeah, you were, down, down in Florida is the is the case that. Uh, uh, right. That, no, no. I thought you were there. I thought you were saying you're going to go to the court to watch it. That's all. I'm just yeah, scheduling yeah. conference anyway. It's probably not. It's probably in chambers. I'm ch- chatting with Glenn Kirshner, who one day you're going to hear the fugitive's name is Glenn Kirshner as they're looking for you and chasing you. They ain't going to take me. Dr. Lot, Richard please. Kimball. Let me tell you that. Is I am like, a fighter. <laughs> By the way, a, a listener called earlier, I think he was a lawyer, was asking about Judge Chutkin, who put a stay on the case when Trump appealed for immunity. And my understanding was that she had no discretion in that, that the Court of Appeals in the D.C. Court of Appeals obligates that. Do you Did we discuss that? Do you know? She had no discretion. It wasn't she up to no her to, yeah. to have the case moving forward once. And once a, an appeal is filed, the trial court is deprived of jurisdiction. So she... Yeah. No, she had no option there. What with the Supreme Court? Is it at all? Doesn't it, I understand our system? I'm not pretending I don't, but it looks like a glaring conflict to have three people in the Supreme Court who Donald Trump gave their job to, yeah. and now they're going to judge him. And then Clarence Thomas, who is for sale, but whose wife Ginny Thomas was involved in emotional support for the coup. Like, well, isn't there a conflict here with these four? Yes, there's a conflict, but the Supreme Court doesn't recognize conflict. They don't care. They they labor under no ethical rules. Um, you, you know, and remember one of Donald Trump's lawyers, I think it was Alina Haba, who was saying, listen, Kavanaugh owes us. I'm paraphrasing. She's like, hey, he'll do the right thing. Donald Trump put him on the bench. And you know where my mind went, Dean? I would love to know what Donald Trump has in the 4,500 Kavanaugh tips that were collected up by the FBI oh, yeah. and delivered to the White House counsel and Donald Trump because he's saying, hey, oh, oh, you bet Kavanaugh better rule my way because look at what I got from the FBI that was never made public. That's a little stomach churning. This whole thing is stomach churning. This whole thing. As a Muslim, I should not be drinking, but I might have to. I mean, this is really, a, a, this is such a frustrating day. I'm not even kidding. I was telling people, I came this close on the subway, just screaming on the subway on the way to the studio. Just like, look at America's ending. Do you not get it? And people would give me like a dollar. Like, what do you, here's a dollar. No, I'm not asking for money. I'm telling you, the world's coming to an end from a legal point of view. So do you think the March 25th date, you mentioned they call it hush money in the media. I call it a New York election interference case or just the election interference case in New York. That seems to be a firm trial date. I don't know why the judge would put it off. I mean, maybe a little bit for a couple of weeks because of some witnesses or a lawyer issue. But I think this seems pretty firm. Yeah. Judge Mershon looks like he is not playing. Um I love the way he shut down Donald Trump's lawyer at the, the end of the last status hearing when the lawyers started spouting off, you know, Trump's nonsense like this is happened in the United States. And, and the judge said, that's not a legal argument. I'll see you on March 25th. I mean, that's that's the way a judge should handle that kind of nonsense that a lawyer starts spouting out. Earlier in the show, and I hate to go back to this target, but it's someone we've talked about a lot. That if Merrick Garland did not delay investigating Trump for one year and instead appointed a special counsel when he first came in, this calendar we're living through right now would be a year earlier. It would have been February 28th, 2023, when the Supreme Court said, well, we're going to hear this case and we'll go, okay, two months, April. And when I look back at this, that delay by Merrick Garland, for whatever reason he did that for, I'm not going to... Disper- I'm not going to say he had some sinister reason, but he did not want to investigate Donald Trump and held it up for a year. That's really costing us now, isn't it? 
It is. And what's what's even more troubling is that there was probable cause to arrest Donald Trump on January 7th, the day he left office, not even for what he did on and around January 6th, but for all of the crimes that were documented that he committed while in office, for which Bob Mueller testified, at least with respect to the obstruction of justice that was documented in the Trump Russia report. Donald Trump could be, you know, uh, he could be prosecuted the day he leaves office. If I were attorney general, would never happen. I'm a bad bureaucrat. Um, but I would have I would have sought an arrest warrant for him on January 7th. He would have been tried a couple of times over, convicted and imprisoned, I believe. And that's, you know, I don't know much, Dean, but for 30 years I had to assess as a federal prosecutor the quality and quantity of evidence supporting indicting somebody and trying them for crime. Um, the, the evidence supporting... The, the the reality that Donald Trump should have been indicted and prosecuted for obstruction of justice several times over and lots of other offenses beginning in you know January when he left office is indisputable you know it's inarguable and I will never understand why the system our institutions of government refuse to take responsibility for charging him with any of his crimes in a timely manner you reap what you sow if you mm -hmm. refuse to hold people accountable for their crimes, like the Jim Jordans of the world, expect more crime from them and from others who choose to follow their path. Any sense, anything, I know it's speculative, but why the Supreme Court would wait two weeks and two days? Because just two days ago, I was on Tom Hartman's show yesterday going, Tom, it's two weeks and a day since they had the appeal and i don't know why they haven't at least ruled stay or no stay or cert or no cert any sense of why it took two weeks and a couple of days in a case that is this important they knew it was so important jack smith tried to get it to jump over the court of appeals and go right to them and they wouldn't take that case because that would have made a whole different scenario we've had this argument a month ago and we probably have a decision by now and we'd be moving on you know we um what we know is that delay works to Donald Trump's advantage. It's his goal. Delay is his friend. And we know that they have delayed this several times over. I, I can't say one thing is connected to the other. They would probably say we had to vote on how many people were agreeing to take cert. Something I find interesting um, is, and maybe telling is that I believe it takes five votes to keep the stay in place, but only four votes to grant cert, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Interesting that they didn't act on the stay. They said, oh, we, we think the stay is moot because we're granting cert. Does that tell me maybe they couldn't muster five votes to keep the stay in place, but they could four votes to grant cert, so they sidestepped the stay altogether? I, I don't know. I'm just so, absorbing this now in real time. Right. I haven't read the, the filing because I was on the way in and we went on air. And I just read the news reports. Did they actually address the stay and say we're not extending the stay formally? Yeah, they, they said that the judgment by the, D the District of Columbia Circuit Court of Appeals shall not be entered. In other words, the stay remains in place. Oh, okay. So it's still staying in place. And last thing, the March 25th case that's coming up in New York, some legal analysts, not conservative, just normal ones, have sort of poo-pooed the case in terms of how serious it is and the level of evidence against Donald Trump. What is your take on it? Well, we've they caught him on tape talking about the crime that he and Michael Cohen were intending to commit in concert or more accurately in a conspiracy. Um, so this is going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. Once they have a fair and impartial jury and panel, then they begin presenting the evidence because it's going to be documentary evidence. It's going to be Donald Trump's own voice of uh, uh, saying, yeah, let's let's make this go away. Let's pay that hush money. Um, it's going to be the false business records themselves, which are, again, inarguably false. The, he was not paying Michael Cohen for legal services. He was paying him for illegal services, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, no, it, it, it's a strong case on the evidence. And as I say, as long as they impanel a fair and impartial jury, they will hold Donald Trump accountable. They'll, they'll find him guilty. And think about this, Dean. He's been through, I, I maintain he's been through three jury trials, in, even though he's only been through two proper, two civil cases. Um, he's lost three civil cases, but one was to Judge Ngoron. It wasn't a jury. And I maintain that he was convicted by proxy in the Trump organization case. His organization that 
his namesake. He controlled it. He ran it. He's responsible for what went on in it. He approved everything down to the penny. His organization was criminally convicted of 17 felony counts for running a 15 year long scheme to defraud in the first degree. Right. That's as good as convicting Donald Trump. He just didn't happen to be sitting at counsel table. So look across those three jury trials, two civil and one criminal, 30 jurors total, all unanimously held Donald Trump accountable. I mean, that is a pretty good predictor of what's about to happen to him in his criminal cases, because the evidence is even stronger in the criminal cases than they were than it was in the civil cases. So he's going down. It's just the Supreme Court is saying, you know what? He may be going down, but we're going to give him a nice, comfortable little lifeboat that he's going to be able to float around in for at least, you know, through November 2024. And then maybe we'll we'll take that boat away from him. Is there any... Is there any way Judge Cannon can use the pending Supreme Court decision to say, I can't rule on, oh, by the way, there's breaking news. Illinois judge removes Donald Trump from the ballot due to the insurrection ban. An Illinois judge. But again, it does, oh, it's not going to matter. The Supreme Court has probably already put a stop to that, Dean. Right, right. <laughs> Hit the refresh. Hit the refresh. So Supreme I saw the Supreme Court invalidates the, yeah. Well, and once Supreme Court rules, they're gonna, it's going to apply... Look, there. I don't know what the Supreme Court's going to rule on that. I have no idea at this point. So when we get the ruling, we will see how it applies to each state. If it doesn't apply to states, it just allow, they're going to say it doesn't apply to a president, blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll see. Because the Constitution doesn't provide that the states shall run their own election. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it does. It does. I forgot about that. This is insane. It's insane. I'm tired, Glenn. Banana We're, Republics I'm tired. now laugh at us. Banana Republics laugh at us. We're 251 days to the election. I'm not going to make it. I mean, really, folks, I'm just going to tap out. We have out. to make it. We have tap to keep me out. fighting. I got to go. It's now up to us. <laughs> it's up to us. It's always up to us, unfortunately. It is, my friend. Well, Glenn, thanks so much for jumping on this quickly here and ranting with us. And I was texting my rant of my anger, and Glenn was texting me back earlier. So thank you so much for coming on. I look forward to chatting with you, and we're going to be in the same internment camp and we're going to have a show there every week it'll be like a comedy strong, me you and pete, Tom, strong, pete dominic will be that pete will open for us well pete dominic opening and then me and glenn it's going to be fun all right man good talking to you take care have a great night Bye.